So what is agrobiodiversity and what does it have anything to do with preventing cannibalism? What is being done now and what can still be done? This is what you'll be finding out in this video today. So let's quickly go over the definition of agrobiodiversity. It's the vital subset of biodiversity. And biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth with the tiniest microorganisms to the mighty whales, along with the habitats that they depend on. So agrobiodiversity is simply the variety of life, developed and actively managed by farmers, herders and fishers. In this case, I'll be specifically concentrating on plant genetic resources, including crops, pasture and rangeland species and so on. Currently, there is over 7,250,000,000 people living on this planet today. Statistics say that almost one-seventh of these people, and that's approximately one billion people, are malnourished or experience food insecurity today. To alleviate hunger and poverty, and the potential that humans will start eating each other, it is important that agriculture is producing a sufficient amount of food, both sustainably and nutritiously. Currently, one of the most common solutions that farmers use today is the spraying of crops with fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides and water. They have also introduced an agricultural practice called monocultures. This is the production of genetically similar or identical plants in a large field. They also use commercial variety of crops. This is where old local crops are being replaced with newer, improved and more exotic plant species. So genetically similar crops with few varieties are intensely cultivated in a large field to intense production and yield. It's not surprising that as a result of this practice, one of the main problems that occur is what is known as genetic erosion, which is the loss of genetic diversity. Uh, wait a minute. Surely if it's producing nutritious food and enough to feed 7 billion people, then what's the big deal? You may ask. And that's a good question. Now this is where it gets very interesting. Biodiversity helps with one, adaption. Shockingly, more than 90% of crop varieties have disappeared from farmers' fields. Kaput! You see, when it, something affects the health of one plant, it usually means it affects all of them because they are genetically similar or identical with each other. Diversity provides them a chance to recover when environmental stress occurs, like climate change, and this helps them to evolve to become more resilient. Two, the maintenance of ecosystem functions. The wide diversity also contributes to nutrient cycling, decomposition of organic matter, crusted and degraded soil, pest and disease regulation and pollination. This all in effect help increase productivity and achieve sustainable yield. Unfortunately, many people don't really see the practical side of this, especially in developed countries where there is a huge financial incentive from using modern intensive farming techniques to both farms and food industries. Another thing is that food prices must stay low so that it is affordable to the poorest too. But these problems can be tackled through alternative practices such as multi-cropping, crop rotation, intercropping, alley farming and growing different varieties of single crop species. They have already been shown to be very beneficial in crop performance, nutrient availability, pest and disease control and water management. And this leads to better productivity and more sustainable yield. To small scale farms it helps optimise limited resources. And for large scale farms, conservation agriculture. So clearly there needs to be a change in perception and approach through the policy, social and economic aspects. Consumers can be made more aware of health benefits when having a sustainable diet from high diversity of foods. One can also support and expand the various research agendas that have already been developed by organisations and groups aiming to increase the effective use of biodiversity for food and agriculture.